Hi everyone, this is Kim with Abundant Life Tarot and we are doing another unboxing video. This time it is of the 78 Tarot Mythical Edition and I'm excited because this is my first 78 Tarot deck. I don't own any of the other ones. I never really felt really moved up until this point to get uh, one of the 78 Tarot's. Not because they're not beautiful or gorgeous actually. All of the 78 Tarot decks to me are gorgeous. It just I wasn't sure if I could work with them and as I think about my collection now, my tarot collection, I really give a lot of thought now to if can, will I be able to use that deck? Not just that it's beautiful, not that it's just that it's independent, um, there is an indie deck or that, um, you know, it's worth X number of dollars. No, I want it for the purpose of using it as well. Yes, I collect decks. Um, especially because I have a strong appreciation for the artwork found in those said decks. But at the end of the day, it's about can I work with this particular deck or not? And I felt out of all the 78 um, tarot decks, this would be the one that is unique to any deck I have in my collection um, and that I could work with. And it is unique. I love that it's um, well, mythical creatures or mythical uh, storytelling. I like that um, in the deck. And it's definitely not like any other deck I have in my collection. So it came, I already kind of opened the box. It was kind of, the box was kind of beat up by the time the post postal service delivered it to me. So I just wanted to make sure that the deck was like, still kind of chilling and all right in there and it was it's fine I, at least from what i could tell i haven't gone beyond just to make sure that the deck was in the box um it has some little bits and things in here oh chakra oracle deck i think i've seen or heard about this or when i was on etsy on the etsy store for 78 tarot there's some that's called and um and a mantras chakra oracle deck okay oh and a beautiful card oh the star card i like collecting the cards um the signed either tarot deck or cards that the creators get you know put in with their packaging i keep it in a special thing. I'm thinking about even just starting like a little album of them. Not that I have that many. So really, it's not really even practical to start an album when I think about it because I don't have that many cards. But something to be able to like appreciate it. Not just go put it in a little keepsake box. But whatever. Maybe I'm just too... Uh, what's the word? Aside from being a pat rack, maybe I'm too um, sentimental. Like not everything is meant to be kept, but I think it is. I, I like to keep almost all the contents that come with the independent deck. Um, I don't know why. I just like to. So it's important to me. I don't know about for you all how important it is to keep all the inserts and things. Oh my goodness. So I come with the bubble wrap. Here is the box. Trying to get a glare. It's kind of hard. Oh my goodness. You can see the refrigerator reflects it. Oh, it is so delicious. This deck, I can tell. It says limited edition. I gotta be very careful. I scratched up another deck, my Dream Keepers Tarot, when I did the unboxing. I was using scissors to open it and I'll scratch the tug box. I don't want to do it with this one. Okay, so it's a matte box, but with gold embossed, um, or gold leaf here, whatever you want to call it. It says Global Art Collaboration Limited Edition. It's a 78 Tarot Mythical Tarot of the Legendary, written by Trish Sullivan, illustrated by 81 artists. And it has the magnetic box, which I am crazy over these days. I think many of us are, you know, it's 
and yeah, <laughs> I could do that all day. Oh, and you know what I'm really crazy over and what now gets me to buying decks most of the time is when the guidebook can fit into the, um, the tarot box. That gets me every time because, guys, I like a good guidebook, but I don't I want to spend up all my room. Oh my gosh, I know I'm going to love this deck. Okay, here's the guidebook. And we have color representations of the cards here. was trying to distract me. I had to roll my eyes. So yeah, you can see it's got a lot of good information. It's very tiny print, which means a lot of information there. Yes. Here's where the backs. Decent size. It's actually larger. Oh, I'd say it's like Probably a smidge larger than the Bohemian Gothic. It's pretty, it's actually kind of big. But maybe I have my moon child here on the table. It's behind me. I might have to get it for comparison of size. Look at the gold gilding. Oh my gosh. Not usually a fan of gilding, but if it's done right, then I have to love it. And it's not matte. I normally like a matte gold um, uh, gilding. But shiny gold will work as long as it's good quality and it won't like just completely like rub away after a few shuffles. You know, sometimes you look at a gilded deck that's not, you know, quality and the gold is like rubbed off just by looking at it. Um, all right, so I was going to... I'm going to do a size comparison. So I'm going to just get up here, get to my shelf, and drop everything. Oh, dropping everything. I'll get that stuff when I stop recording. So here's the Bohemian Gothic. So just for a size comparison. And this is actually a larger size as well to me for a card size. Okay, look, this is even bigger than that. Yeah. Quite a bit bigger. But I I think it's still easy to use. I think it's more comparable to the Moon Child tarot size, which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go all the way over there to get it. All the way being like a few feet. Let's just start looking at the cards. So this is 81 cards and I need to get on to it, right? And then it has the key, the, I guess the keyword or the suit or the major arcana name. And then the uh, artist below, if you can see that. This is meditation. I think these are one of, one of the bonus cards. And we'll look at the guidebook in just a moment. The Dragon Tamer. The Guardians. Wow. There's a lot going on. Look at that. There's a face right there. I love it though. I could look at this all day. I'll let you guys take that in. Look at that. Gorgeous. Okay, so these were the bonus cards, these first three, the Guardian, the Dragon Tamer, and Meditation. Then we get to the full card, and I love that full card. The Magician, Borderless, Bendable Cardstock. I think I'm going to enjoy shuffling it. I don't know if this will say the, I don't know what the GSM is, and I don't know if the guidebook is going to say. Okay, here's the High Priestess, which I just adore. The Emperor. 
first. The Emperor. The Hierophant. I like that. Some of the subjects. <laughs> the parishioners, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the lovers. Beautiful. Beautiful. However, not my favorite depiction of the lovers. I like when I when I think of the lovers, if they were, I don't know. I just think that they should be either holding hands or wrapped into an embrace with one another or ga longingly gazing and looking into one another's eyes. I don't know about this lover's card as far as like how effective it is in bringing about that lover's feel from, the, you know, from tarot. But nevertheless, it's still a beautiful, de a beautiful card. The Chariot. Now, this is a gorgeous card. And now I see why it's a chariot. She's on a, she's on a boat. At first I was like, why is it a chariot? What's going on? And then if you look carefully, you'll see that she's riding on a boat. And it's probably fast moving water, it looks like. Wow, she's badass. Gorgeous. Not your typical depiction of a chariot, but it works. Here's Justice. It's just like get lost in the images here. Here's the Hermit. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, she's holding a heart. A bleeding heart. Oh, look at strength. Gorgeous. Love that. Oh, I love the hanged man. I honestly think the couple of cards, aside from like the lovers, um, so far with the majors, I feel like if we were just going on the majors, I could use this deck for readings for others. Death. I could see it instantly going into my repertoire of decks that I tap into. Temperance. The devil. Devil. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh, goodness. Look, wait a minute. There's hypodermic needles, and, like pin cushions. Like the little teddy bears are pin cushions. Intense. Here's a great tower. Love that. Colors just pop, so rich, just so vibrant. I'm in love with this deck. The star. That's a proper star, though. The moon. Now, another reason why I end up getting this deck is because I don't own any Jasmine Beckett Griffith, Griffith decks, nor do I own any Lucy Cavendish's decks. I just never really resonated with those decks, um, not because they're not beautiful or not, um, but they're great readers, all of the above, but they're wonderful. I just wasn't really called to that style of art. Um, despite on my Pinterest, if you looked at my Pinterest, you'd see that there's quite a few of these images throughout because I do like surreal art, but as far as for my deck, um, I don't know about this for my deck, but one card I could do. And I'm happy. I think I'm happy that Jasmine got the moon card. I think she did an excellent job for this card. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's a true moon card. So I got a little taste 
that up for work, which is all I need. The sun. Beautiful. Judgment. Dig it. The world. On one hand, I like what it's saying and what it's doing here. The ending of something and the beginning of something new. But, I don't know. It's not what I typically would see in the world, like a world card. But, for one of the many meanings for the world card, it works. So. Okay, Ace of Pentacles. Oh, and I like that. She signed hers. You can see where the artist signed it barely there. Ace of Pentacles. Oh, so pretty. Sorry. Two of Pentacles. <laughs> Three of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles. I like that a lot, actually. Look at all those crystals. I feel like share some of them crystals. <laughs> um, five of Pentacles. Ooh. Hmm. Six of Pentacles. Look at that. It's not what I typically would expect from the Six of Pentacles. I mean, I guess I could see it. I'm trying to see if I can read that. I don't know. What do you think about that Six of Pentacles? Here's Seven of Pentacles. And I know some people are like, oh, you know, it's kind of jarring this card. It like kind of takes you out of the, you know, it kind of throws you out of this, what is that expression? Where you can no longer like be in the moment, we'll just say for lack of better words here. But I realize with collaboration decks that not every card is going to marry the others perfectly but as long as within whatever it's in, trying to achieve for their assigned uh, tarot card did they achieve it that's for me more of the question not so much if it's like all a part of a cohesive part or package because again unless you were doing something like the slow holler where it's really one theme and all specific if you just say hey mythical creatures you get the seven of pentacles let's see what you could do obviously you're going to have a big old gamut different gamut of things so you just have to decide if that's the kind of collaboration deck you want to to have in your collection or not i've had success with the eta tarot which is a collaboration deck i don't know if i have any other collab decks honestly i'd have to check but i like that deck and yeah it's different from card to card, but for me it works, but it doesn't work for everyone. So you just have to ask yourself. Now this is a seven of pentacles. Gorgeous artwork. And remember I said for me, I'm asking, is it doing, doing what I would expect it to do for a seven of pentacles? And the answer would be no. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I think once I started working with it, I can make, I can just intuitively go. I mean, I know I could read with it and go off my own intuition on what's happening with the rest of the cards and my understanding of Seven of Pentacles, but I don't know. Still a gorgeous card, nevertheless. Won't keep me from using this deck, I'll say. There are some decks where there's cards that will definitely keep me from using the deck. Eight of Pentacles. And that is cute. 
she's a bitch. Nine of Pentacles. That makes me happy for some reason. When I saw this card, I think on Etsy, I was like, oh, I love I really want to have this deck for some strange reason. You, I don't even know why. It's a green man. I don't know why. I just like it. it makes me feel happy. Ten of Pentacles. So awesome. Love that. Page of Pentacles. It's gorgeous. Wow. Gorgeous. Hmm. Here's the Knight of Pentacles. It's very diverse, this deck, and I appreciate that. Queen of Pentacles. And again, that can definitely um, happen, or I would anticipate happen with 81 artists, that they're going to have different perspectives, use animals versus humans, use different races and different depictions of a myth. King of Pentacles. Ace of Swords. Two of Swords. Hmm. It's interesting. Three of Swords. Okay, four of swords. <laughs> Mythical creature. Five of swords. And so again, what I'm loving about this deck is that some of these styles alone, like if this if the, this was a deck of all these type of images, I probably wouldn't get it. I wouldn't get this deck. Um, or even... This one, even though this is a, all of the images are amazingly gorgeous, no doubt. But if it was a deck like this, I probably wouldn't get it. It's too, you know, pastel y for me. I like pastels, but I don't know. Anyways, I, I wouldn't be able to have this deck as, as a standalone deck. But as a part of a collaboration deck, I like it. It's in small doses. Oh. I love the Six of Swords. I'm always looking out for the Six of Swords, trying to see if, if it speaks to me. The Chariot, to me, kind of felt like a little Six of Swords-ish because she's on a boat. But this works too. It's gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Seven of Swords definitely works for me as well. The borderless, and it's like, what's the word? I don't know. Like a, give me a little satin. It's not matte. It's not a matte. But it's definitely not glossy. Eight of Swords. Ooh, Nine of Swords. This is my kind of card. I don't normally do black and white decks either, but again, I can I can take a ta I can get a taste of it here. But this is a great <laughs> nine of swords. Ooh, look at this ten of swords. All the swords, Adam. Page of Swords. It feels so good in the hand. Oh, it's like what is it? beveled, is that what they call that? It's kind of raised or Knight of Swords. Hmm, look at this Queen of Swords. Oh yeah, 
King of Swords. Let's see what's what's up next. Ah, oh, wands. Here's Ace of Wands. Two of Wands. I don't like that. Oh, interesting. Three of Wands. Oh, I love this Four of Wands. Another card that I was like, yeah, I want this in my collection for sure. Here's Five of Wands. Six of Wands. Seven of Wands. <laughs> that kind of makes me laugh. Eight of Wands. Sorry, I have a certain husband that keeps trying to distract me. He thinks it's funny. Eight of Wands. <laughs> I'm going to beat his butt. <laughs> Nine of Wands. <laughs> I need you to stop. I'm Thank you. Ten of Wands. I hear pitter patter up the stairs. Good. <laughs> Page of Wands. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, salamander. Knight of Wands. He wants attention, my husband. We never get time off at the same time, so. Like my big old kids today. Queen of Wands. And here's the King of Wands. Like that. And this should be the Cups. Ace of Cups. <laughs> Two of Cups. Yeah, see, like with the lovers, the, the on the lovers card, there is no embrace. You're just kind of standing there. Maybe that's what they did in that time period, but that's not necessarily giving me a, the lovers feeling. This gives me more of the lovers feeling, and the lovers depiction in the actual Major Arcana should be with the Two of Cups. They should, they should be switched, in my opinion. Three of Cups. Four of Cups. Oh, she has a mermaid? Yes. Five of Cups. Coming to life, coming alive. <laughs> Six of Cups. Hmm. Seven of Cups. It's beautiful. Oh, look at Eight of Cups. You know what it reminds me of is the Vision Quest Tarot. And this was like one of the cards that would be in it if they if it would have had a bonus card. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Look, they're on their boat sailing away. Leaving us all behind. And I like that it's normally with the eight of so um, excuse me, eight of cuts, it's normally 
like dark nighttime, but you know, they're leaving in the daylight, eyes wide open, clear as to what they're doing, leaving the situation. Nine of Cups. Ten of Cups. Seven. Colin Laura. Artist. I had to check. I thought it might have been like Raven Thielen. She's very much into dragons, but when I look closely, totally different type of dragons. <laughs> not, and clearly not the same artist I had in mind. Page of Cups. I love this Page of Cups. Look, she's got a little bit of scaling right there. Love that. Knight of Cups. I'm hoping that this is a deck like at the end of 2019 that I say, oh my goodness, I used this a thousand times. That's what I'm hoping. Queen of Cups. Don't we always hope that? And then finally, the King of Cups. So there you all have it. That is the 78 Tarot Mythical Edition. And quite the addition. Okay, I decided to show it from the single because I was shuffling it and you couldn't really see what I was doing or what I was looking at once I got it to the table. So I wanted to switch the angle here and kind of give you a closer look at that. The box and to discuss the book briefly because we didn't get a chance to do that when I was going through each of the cards. So we'll take a look at that too. Spend a few moments doing that. And here's the guidebook also up close. And it has the card story, the card's message by Trish, and the mythological association, which is the fawn, and keywords, obsession, temptation, addiction, self-destruction, element, earth, astro astrological association, Capricorn, and this is for the devil. So it's got a lot of good info here. Let's take a look at the beginning. Navigating this book. Okay. Intro, Acknowledgements, Labyrinth of Tarot Spread. I like that. One card draw, three card spread. But I like the Labyrinth Tarot Spread. It's trapped, ball of string, avoid the Minotaur, don't get lost, see the light, freedom. And I like that. And then it has, it goes into the cards, descriptions, and they have Meditation. That was one of the bonus cards. Let's see if there's anything in the back. Nope. So good, good little chunky guidebook. Let's see how many pages. 171 pages. And then we we'll look at the the box again. You see the gold pop right there, and then this, the the um, autographs of all the artists featured in there, which is cool. And now to shuffle. Now to shuffle. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Shuffles like a dream. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to have fun with this one. It's a little difficult to handle because it's a little on the large side. But on the plus side with larger bits. If you do video readings like I do, that's my primary way of delivering my readings. It's nice to have larger cards. The clients can see the, the images much more clearly, I think. I'd still have to probably zoom in or bring the cards up. But it at least is larger than, than say, your standard, like, Los Scarabio deck, your mass produced, which are quite a bit smaller. Yeah. It is so pretty. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Cannot wait to start using it. All right, guys. So there you have it. That is the lovely 78 Tarot Mythical Tarot. I'm just...
in love, in love. But when am I not, right? Anyways, let me know. Do you have this deck? What do you think of it? What are your impressions? Do you plan on getting it? Do you have any of the other 78 tarot uh, decks? I'm curious to know. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Much love. See you all in the next video.